I was in a math competition in 8th grade. It wasn't as exciting as the ones in this book. They asked a math question to 10 different kids. The first one to get it right moved on to the next round. I made it to round 2 before getting eliminated. That was my entire math leak career. Two questions. Argofomp book review. Argofomp book review. This book was written by Peter Larangis. Miss Hartley, the head of the school's math department, asks Stacy to join the school's math team. Stacy has good enough grades to do it, but she doesn't want to because math lovers are losers. Why would she purposely spend time with nerds when she is cheerleader material? Police. Like, I had nothing better to do than hang out with math geeks on permanent bad hair days. At the babysitter's club meeting, Stacy tells her friends about the mathletes. They all think it'd be great if Stacy joined the team and won the championship. Stacy figures if math competitions are okay with the BSE, they can't be all that bad. So I guess Stacy really didn't care about hanging out with nerds. She just cared what her friends thought about it. Let's hope Stacy feels the same way in her next book. Stacy's dad arrives with unexpected news. He just got fired. So he bought a new car and he's decided to spend as much time with Stacy as possible. He makes her lobster for dinner, talks in a weird French accent, and takes Stacy on impromptu outings all the time. Mom tries her hardest to be nice about the situation, even though Dad is acting like a hyperactive four-year-old. Let's go to the movies, Stacy! I bought lobster for you! Pay attention to me, Stacy! At the first mathlete practice, Stacy meets excitable super nerds Alexander Kurtzman and Jason Fox. As in Jason Fox from the comic strip Foxtrot? The other kids on the team are less nerdy, and Stacy has fun being the only one to get questions right. The math problems in this book are halfway decent. They're not really math puzzles. They're mostly logic puzzles, including the classic brain teaser, How Can You Turn This 10-Point Triangle Upside Down by Only Moving Three Points. I was expecting math puzzles. Like... If six out of the last seven Babysitter's Club books featured kid carnivals, what are the chances of the next book having a carnival? At 85.7%. Correct! Claudia has to tutor Lindsay DeWitt in math. Stacy's notes are too complicated for them to understand, so Claudia tries tutoring a different way. She sings, uses Legos, and does a Bugs Bunny impersonation. Stacy's a little mad that Lindsay prefers silly gimmicks to precise mathematical formulations. But when Stacy tries to do real math, everyone else just gets confused and stares blankly at her. Stacy worries she's making math less fun for everyone. The first math meet is run by Reverdy Schmidt, who is so awkward it removes all the tension of the moment. Stacy does well, and the team wins. She wants to celebrate. But Dad says he already made reservations in New York. This leads to a joke chapter where Dad's new car causes a ton of problems. Because apparently, people in New York haven't figured out how driving works yet. People cut him off in traffic, they steal his parking spot and his hubcaps, he gets a $40 ticket at a parking meter. What an outrageously large ticket! Dad uses a parking garage, which makes him late for a play and scrapes his car. He gets home after 1 a.m. in the morning and says he wants to spend even more time with Stacy from now on. Uh, no thanks, Dad. You should focus on getting your act together first. Maybe driving lessons are in order. Stacy gets a perfect score in the next math competition, so her team wins with 69 points. They win a third competition... And now, they're in the state finals! Wow, joining the team a week before the end of the year worked out pretty darn well for Stacy. She gets all of the glory without much of the work. In the subplot, the elementary school is having a math fair. All the kids are super excited about it, and they spend a lot of time preparing. I thought this was fun. The Pike family is always good for humorous chaos. But critics have pointed out it's unrealistic for every kid in town to magically be obsessed with math. Dad invites Stacy to a concert, 
She's excited until she realizes that conflicts with her math competition. She tries to tell the teacher she can't make it. When she gets a lot of pressure, the team's second best player just called in sick, and the scores came in. Stacy's tied for number one best mathlete in the state of Connecticut. Remember, she joined the team last week. This other guy must have screwed up pretty badly in the first few months of the competition if Stacy caught up to him that quickly. Stacy feels miserable, and Marianne helps her realize it's unfair for Dad to drop huge scheduling conflicts on her without warning. Stacy tells her dad about the competition. He apologizes, and he doesn't mess with her schedule again. Ha <laughs> ha! Just kidding! Without telling anyone, he makes fancy dinner reservations. Stacy's forced to cancel her plans with her math friends and the Babysitter's Club. They all get mad at her over this. The BSC says the math kids are so smart, it's impossible to talk to them. It's like they're talking another language. Which reminds me, why isn't Janine in this book? This book is begging for a scene of Stacy and Janine talking about math. Dad announces he got a new job, he won't stop talking about it, and he'll be too busy working to make the next meet. Stacy feels conflicted because she'll miss new dad, but new dad was also kind of a jerk, and on top of that, all her friends hate her. The kids' math fair goes well. The student who wins doesn't know anything, her parents did all the work. Cheater! The kids have fun at the fair, and it ends with a math-based poop joke. I think they should subtract the potty humor. Stacy's team loses the next meet by two points, meaning there has to be a tiebreaker game to determine the state champion. That's actually a good thing. Now Stacy gets over 60 more questions to answer, which easily puts her within striking distance of the all-time individual state scoring record. The Babysitter's Club helps Stacy come to grips with her feelings. After all, Chrissy knows exactly what it's like to have a divorced dad who randomly shows up and manipulates her emotions. As you'd expect, Stacy does well at the final meet, and she makes the all-time record. Dad shows up just in time to see her win the championship with a number-drawing puzzle that does not at all test the contestants' math skills. It's a weird choice to end the finals on. Everyone celebrates, and Dad promises to be a better parent from now on. The end. Postbook follow-up. Maybe it's because I'm a mathlete, but I like this book. It's got multiple storylines, which is always nice, and all the stories were pretty solid. It's interesting to see Stacy's dad lose his job when his obsession with work is one of the main reasons for his divorce. This book reminds me of Jesse's Gold Medal, which is also about a babysitter starting a new sport and becoming a champion. I think the story is a more natural fit for Stacy, because it's well established that she's a math whiz, she's been good at math for over a hundred books. This is not a previously unknown talent like Jesse's swimming skills. A very minor subplot in this book is Stacy getting stage fright. I like that and kind of wish we had more of it, although Stacy's been on stage in front of big groups before, so you could argue it's out of character for her to have stage fright. Overall, I thought it was a solid book. It's nice to see Stacy get a math-based book. That sets a good example for young girl readers who are interested in STEM. Especially because most of the Baby Series Club books don't set an example for girls who like math. Yeah, we've had dozens of books where the narrator insults math by saying something like, oh, I could never be club treasurer, I hate math. I wouldn't mind another book along the lines of this one, like Abby discovers she's good at science, or Marianne loves history so much she gets involved with a renaissance fair. That's totally something she would do. I give Babysitter's Club number 105, Stacy the Math Whiz, a 9.5 out of 10.